Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at this object and a number of different workflows to create the same object. So this is really a learning exercise. It looks like a quite a hard object to create, but it's actually quite easy. It's basically a common workflow, but there are a number of other workflows that we can use. This video is designed to allow you to venture through four different workflows to create the same object and also highlight some of the troubles that you may come across when creating the object and how to fix those. So this object has been around for quite a long time. It's one of the CAD exercises that you often see. Looks complex, but it's actually quite easy to make. And it was also a question that was raised on the Facebook group for free CAD. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at these workflows. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So I've loaded up FreeCAD and I've got a copy of the object in front of me. As you can see, at the moment it's quite a basic mesh, so it's quite low quality, but it just gives you an idea of what we're going to create. We're gonna first take the easy route to create this. So if we look from the profiles, the top and the rear, you can see, well, they look exactly the same, the profiles. So when you're modeling, the first thing you need to do is look from each of the viewpoints, look around the object and examining the object to see what it looks like. I can tell from this that these two profiles are exactly the same. And what you need to do is think of it in silhouette. So if this was just a 2D black silhouette, then that's what we'll just sketch. The workflow we're gonna use is a common workflow for the first instance. So we're gonna look at a number of instances with this and we're gonna learn about a number of different things in FreeCAD for this. So it's a great case study for learning FreeCAD and understanding how sketches work, how orientation works, etc., etc. There's many workflows to create this object. So I've already got a new document open and I'm gonna hide that and just start sketching. Let's come over to the sketcher. I'm going to use the part workflow first, and then we go to part design. We create a new sketch. And let's cancel that, make sure I haven't got anything selected because I had that selected before, and create a sketch along the XY plane. Let's go for the XY plane. So we've got our sketch here. Now, if we look at the fillet, this filleted mesh, we can see we've got this object here and how it sits upon that plane. And this is the silhouette we're going to create. It's not gonna be exact because I'm gonna work through this quite quickly. First of all, make sure you simplify the object. So take these fillets off. So we've got fillets going around here. That's remove those, visually remove those in your mind and sketch from there. So let's hide that filleted mesh. So basically what we've got is a circle with an inner circle. And I'm just going to lay down a rectangle. I'm going to take the rectangle, take these two points, select both of those, and then select this point here and make a symmetrical constraint. So this sits on this line and so does this. And I'm going to delete this line here. After selecting it, just hit delete on the keyboard. Now we come over to the arc. So I'm going to pick the end point and rim point arc. I'm going to connect up this point to this curve, like so, this point on line constraint. Now, because I've got, let's come over to the task so we can see that. And if we come down here, because I've got the auto constraints on and the auto remove redundance, I can take this curve and make it tangent. See the tangent constraint is kicking in. So we click. And then we've got a tangent constraint going across there. Click on this one, click on this curve and make a tangent constraint against there. So we've got this so far. I'm gonna hit escape, get the mouse pointer back and adjust this circle. 
I'm not doing exact constraints to the original object. I'm just going through the process. That's set some diameter. I'm going to set this one to 50. And this internal one, I'm going to set to 40. And we've got this length here. And that's set a length on this one as well. So something like 40. And you can constrain this down how you want. I'm just going for something like that. The height, let's just go for 25. Might make the internal a bit smaller. So let's click on that. And I'm going to make that 35. So now I'm going to do some trimming. You can use the trim tool. So trim an edge. Come up to sketch. Sketch geometries and trim edge. You can't find it on the long tool well. And we'll trim this circle here. So you can see as I hover over this circle, we get these green highlights around these points, which will trim those off. So trim that, hit escape, and I'm just going to take these two points and keep them in vertical alignment. And you can see, well, we've got this point here and this line, and we need that as a point on object constraint. So we've got that now. Notice I haven't put any tangency constraints between these two edges here, this curve and this edge. Now I've done this because when we come to fill it, I want to show you something. It might fail, it might not. It's all to do with near tangency. And to fix it, we just create tangency across these. I covered this in a video regarding fillet problems and near tangency with an arc and a line. So we've got this object. Let's close that. Well, we've got this sketch. And now what we do is take that sketch, come over to the part workbench, and I'm going to come up to view and toggle axis cross because this part is actually quite important. I'm going to extrude this symmetrical to the point of origin, this point here. So click on the sketch, hit the extrude. What we're going to do is extrude this with enough length to cover this diameter, which was 50. So we use the symmetrical, which makes our life easier. You'll see this in a moment and set this to 50. This will create our first profile, so from the side. Now what we can do is a number of different workflows from here. I could take this extrude and clone it and rotate it. I could take the sketch and clone it and rotate it and then extrude it. So there's a number of ways to go from here. I could take a subshape binder of this sketch and do exactly the same thing. But I'm going to take the extrude I even could use a subject binder against the extrude, but I'm going to come over to the draft workbench and clone that now. I could even take a link. So let's come over to the draft workbench. Let's hide the grid in and click on the extrude and come over to the clone. Now the clone is in the same place and because we're nice and symmetrical to the center, it makes our life easier when we go right click, transform, and we can rotate this into place. So we can just flip this around this way. And then what we need to do is come around and flip it around this way. So we've got that there. And we just need to do some adjustments to get that into place. And we can use the adjustments on the extrude or we could use the transform widget that we had before. But I'm gonna come into the position, placement, position because it's not attached to anything and bring it along the x-axis and just reduce that down. And what I'm looking for is for the edge. Let's click on the front for you so we can see that we want the edge, this edge here to be in line with this edge, this one here. Now, because I haven't fully constrained this down, I haven't got exact measurements in here. So 
perhaps I should have gone back, let's double click on the sketch, and place a measurement from here to here. I'm going to actually place a point on this arc. We've got a point on that arc there. And did that, no it didn't. Let's take that point and make it point on object constraint on here. Move this one. That means I've got a nice length to deal with here. So I can place a length in here. And you can see it's 97.70. So I'm going to make this just 100. We close that. Everything recomputes underneath. And now I can position this one correctly. Minus 18, minus 19. And let's get that into position. Something like, something like that. So now that's in position, let's come back over to the part workbench. Click one extrude, control click the other, which is the clone, and we're going to use the common. Part, boolean, and intersection. Called intersection from the part menu or common from this menu. And that creates a common across there. Now you notice we've got a cutoff here. And if we look at the common and look at the extrude, we've got our sketch. And that's because that if we've got this line, it's got to be in line with here on the other side. So if we're looking down here, let's pretend our sketch is down, looking down on this side, then it's got to be in line. What we've got, if we come back to the model, and look at one of the extrudes. That's the extrude for that one. And this is the extrude for this one. You can see that this point here is not in line. Look at the top, you can see it's not in line. So we need to move the extrude, which is this one, and we can move that back until it's in line. So remember they're the same size, so that should do us. And the tasks, hit close, and the extrude is showing, so let's hide that. And now we've got our shape. Now, when it comes to filleting, this may fail, it may not fail, let's try it. So click on this edge, and this will fill it all the way around here, so this will follow the edge all the way around. For that, you can see we've got all the edges there, and we can select. And let's try a radius. That's where's the edge we selected? That edge there. Let's try a radius of 1.3. Let's go for two, and then hit OK. And that's actually has filleted there all the way around. If this failed, we've got some interesting fillets going this way. If this failed, we would just come back into the extrude, this sketch here, and double click it, and make these two tangent. So we've got tangency going across there, that's okay that. Because these are symmetrical, we don't have to worry about this side. If I hit close, they have got better, so those edges there have closed which is much better. And we've got our basically finished result. So that's a common workflow. So let's look at the same type of workflow in part design. I'm just gonna click on this one and hide it. And I'm going to borrow a sketch from here. So I'm gonna borrow this sketch here. I can come up to edit and duplicate selection. So I've got a copy of this sketch in here. Let's hide that and just show that sketch. So we've created our sketch. Let's come over to the part design. And this is where things can get a bit interesting. I'm going to use the same workflow. And I'm going to show you a problem that we're going to hit. So I'm in the part design. I need a body. So I'm going to create a body. I haven't selected the sketch. So if I selected that sketch, it would have pulled in this sketch into that body. But all we do is select that sketch and drop it inside the body. So it's inside the body now. That sketch has no support at the moment. So it's just sitting there with placement. 
So it's sitting there on the same plane as it was before the XY plane. If I take that sketch and this time use the pad rather than the extrude, I've got the same option. So I can go symmetrical to plane and the length we need as 50. So the same diameter of here. Then what I can do is run a Boolean against this as well. To do that, I need to clone this object. Now this is where it can fall down. If I took the body and cloned the body, then that will be a bit of a mistake. Let me show you. If I take that body and use the clone or part design, create clone, I've created another body, which is the clone. So this is the clone body. Remember that I've cloned the body. So what I've done is cloned the placement, the attachment and everything that's part of the body into a new body. Anything that happens with this body will happen to the clone. And that's important. If I take the clone and go through the same process, right click transform, rotate this around and then flip it over and then place it. And okay, that's coming to the clone body. Look at the placement. I'm going to do minus 20. So we've got that there. Now, our first body is the active body. So that's used the Boolean or part design Boolean operation. The active body disappears. If we add a body and then select our clone, we get a fuse. We drop this down, we can select common, which is exactly what we want. But when we hit OK, you see we've got a tick there. Need to refresh it. Edit, refresh, and we get this dependency error. That's because we've created a clone from the body. It updates the clone. The clone then updates the Boolean, which is part of the body. And we get this forever fighting against the clone and the body. So if we do it in reverse, then, well, there is another problem. That's just control Z on the last operation. And edit refresh or control R in my operating system, which is Linux. So that's make this clone body the active body. Right click toggle active body. So the cloned body is the active body. Now, if we do this, let's make sure nothing's selected and use the Boolean. Add body and click the body. Well, nothing's happened. If I click common, as you can see, it hasn't taken. Why is that? Because we cloned the body, it's actually cloned the placement of its parent. So we cloned it, though we've rotated it and moved it, the placement and the rotation is still the same. So what we're doing really is that you see when we do our operation, let's just hide, yeah, hide this one, is that we end up getting just something like this because FreeCAD sees this as still in the same place. So what do we need to do? Well, it's simple. We don't clone the body, but we actually clone the operation. Let's delete that clone and we have the body back. So now I'm gonna clone the pad, take the pad and use the clone. So create a clone, part design, create a clone. I've got this clone, which is the draft clone pop up, not this one, the part design clone. So now I've got the two bodies. Now I can rotate this body because this is the clone. If you look, the base feature is the pad. If I rotate this body, right click transform, and we'll rotate this around and also rotate it around the other way. And then we've got to move it by minus 20, I believe, along the X axis. So now what we got is we've got two bodies. One's not active, so I need to double click to make sure that one's bold. And now we can run the Boolean operation at the body. Add this one 
And as you can see, at the moment it's fused and we use the common, it's actually worked. And okay that. And we can add the fillet, which is this one. Run it around all the outsides and we'll bring this up, say two, and okay that. So we have our shape. So that's the part design boolean workflow. Now there are a number of other workflows and I'm gonna show you one which is really handy to understand orientation, placement and attachment. Again, I'm going to borrow the sketch, which is in the pad. So in here, this pad here, take that, edit, and we're gonna duplicate selected object. And at the moment it's inside here. So I'm gonna take that sketch and place it outside. What will happen is that I'll move outside that body. Click on the body and press the space bar and hide it. So we've got the sketch. Let's create a body first from that sketch. So click on the body, create body. And it's gonna ask me where I'm going to place it. And I want it along the X, Y plane. And that's okay that. So the sketch is attached to the sport of X, Y plane. Now this workflow is handy if these differ in a certain way, they're slightly different shape, but we're gonna go for the same shape with this one. So first of all, I've got my sketch. So what I can do is I can copy this sketch. Again, there's multiple ways of copying it. If I go edit duplicate selection, it's going to ask me what else I want to duplicate. So we've got the dependencies there. I don't want the XY plane. So let's uncheck that. So I'm gonna place it upon another plane. So we've got sketch 002. If I okay that, we get sketch 003, which is a copy of that sketch. That sketch is still attached to the XY plane. It shares the same plane. I'm going to reorientate that sketch now. Click on that last sketch, and we need to come over to the sketcher. And we're going to use this button here reorientate sketch or sketch and reorientate. So at the moment it's saying the support face cannot be reorientated. Do you want to detach it? Hit yes. And now we can reorientate it along another plane. And I'm gonna pick the XZ plane. So I want to bring it around to this plane here, the XZ plane. We may need to reverse the direction. I'm going to do that in a moment. Let's hit okay. So as you can see, that's reorientated the sketch along that plane. Let's close that and have a look, see what's happened. So we're halfway there. The sketch, as you can see, if we look down, it's flat face, but we've got a problem in that it has no reverse direction. And that's because we haven't got a support. And though it's reorientated on the plane, it's not attached it to that plane. At the moment, the map mode is flat face, so we need to select the support, click on that, and we're looking for the XZ plane. Look down, and you can see the origin is in here. We've got a load of other things in here because this is all to do with the previous projects, but this will be much simpler when you have a single object in here, and we look down for the XZ plane and hit OK. So now we've got an XZ plane. And now we have this map reverse up here. If we click on that and click on true, then we've reversed that upon the plane. But at the moment, it needs some adjustment. Take the sketch. It's attached to the plane now. The placement has moved down and it's read only. So all this is read only because it's attached. So we've got attachment. So we've got to offset it slightly come into position and we're looking along the X and we can move that along the X and this will probably be minus 20 as well. Actually, it's gonna be 20 because it's reversed. So that's in position now. I'm going to use something called a reverse pocket. I'm not gonna use a common against these. I'm gonna use a pad and a pocket. 
So first of all, we'll pad one of these. Let's pad our first one, this one here, but we're gonna come over to the part design. Go to the model. First sketch, pad that. And it's going to be symmetrical to plane because if I placed 15 here, it's gonna go upwards, but we want it symmetrical. So it fields that space, which the other profile is taking up. That's okay that. Now, if I pocket this as is, so if I take the other sketch, so you can see the other sketches in here, this one here, if I pocket that, it's not going to do what I want it to do. If I go through all and also make that symmetrical, we're going to end up with something like this. It's actually going to go error because it's going to go straight through the other side. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to use something called a reverse pocket. If we take the sketch, which is this one here, and we'll section view through that. So sketch, view section, you can see it there. If I draw a square around this, like so, and hit close, what I've done is I'm going to pocket the negative space. So if I hide that pad a minute, this will be pocketed out here, and this will be pocketed out here, leaving this. So what we get now, if I click on that sketch and use the pocket, and see what's happening inside, we need to go through all. I'll take it through out the other side so you can see that's taking effect. And we need to go symmetrical. And we get the same object. OK. And then add the fillet, the last operation of the fillet. And we set that to 2 mil. And OK that. So I've duplicated the sketch and used a reverse pocket. Let's say we wanted to keep those sketches linked. So this is part design of reverse pocket. Let's rename that one. So PD reverse pocket workflow. So we want to keep these linked. Let's have a look at that because at the moment, if we change one of those, because I've just duplicated it. So if I come into the pad, look at the original sketch. Let's say we put say a circle in here like so and close that that will create this kind of effect which is which is quite funky anyway so these sketches aren't linked now we can get over that with using instead of a sketch we could use a clone of that sketch if you wanted to take this type of workflow but you'll need to do some extra things in there. So you would have to actually create a subshape binder because you want to use the reverse pocket. Let's have a look at that one. Let's take one of these sketches. So I use this pad, let's edit and duplicate selected object. And I only want the sketch, this one here, sketch 002 and okay that. And we'll hide the original object there that we've taken it from. Um, well, first of all, we need to take that sketch and place it outside. So that's shrink that down, take that sketch and drop it on the top project. Again, nice collection of different ways of doing this here. We'll leave the hole, just leave it there. And we'll create a body. And I didn't place that inside, so I'm going to just drop it inside there. So we've got the body, we've got the sketch. I can use the draft workbench to come over to the draft workbench, click the sketch, modifications, clone. So now I've got the clone of the sketch. I can now rotate it by right click transform and rotate this into position. So I'm using the clone instead. And let's make sure we get hold of the right axis. That's it. And okay that and take that sketch and we look 
at the placement position along the x and that's going to be minus 20 so we're doing the same thing this means that when one changes so for instance let's come into the sketch and we'll change say this in here make it smaller and close that the other changes as well so we've got a clone on the sketch rather than having a clone on the body but the problem is is that well we need to have the negative space around the outside so we need to create some kind of rectangle in here i'm going to take the sketch and drop it inside the body because at the moment it's outside i'll keep it all inside the body and i'm going to create a new sketch so if i look at this if i click on this sketch and come over to the part design the model so click on that sketch and what i can do is create a new sketch and we're going to place it and i've forgotten which one's the clone now so let's cancel that so the clone is that one i don't have to click on that clone actually let's place it along this plane here this one so now we've got the sketch there's a clone sitting in the background I'm just going to place a rectangle around here. Hit escape, and I'm going to take these two points and the center point and add some symmetry. And that's say that these two are also equal. So we've got a square basically, and we'll pull this out this way. So we framed our object. We can keep it to a rectangle if we want. If we hit close, We've got two objects. Now this is where the subshape binder comes in handy. Take this one and control click the clone. Create a subshape binder or part design, create a subshape binder. We've got the subshape binder now, let's click off. We look down, we've got this binder. And I'm gonna hide the previous sketch, which is in the space bar and the clone, just getting those out of the way. So we've got the binder and our original sketch. Make sure that the binder, if we come down, we've got some options in here. Let's shrink this up. And we come down and we can see that we've got make face. This is the one I'm looking for. Set this to false. So basically this is now a sketch. So if I took the original sketch and made a pad, set that to 50. Well, let's make sure that it is symmetrical. So click on the pad, mid plane, set this to true. So if you miss it, mid plane to true. And then we can take the binder and we'll make a pocket. So using the pocket for all and then symmetrical to plane. And hit OK. So what we've done now is used a clone of the sketch created a reverse pocket using another sketch as the framing. So we framed it with another sketch to make negative pocket or reverse pocket, and then use that with our pad to create the object. So we've got our finished object here. There are many other ways of doing this. This workflow or well, these workflows are really good for anything that has a single profile on one side and a single profile on the other side. So it can be made up of two profiles. Such objects as say a spoon, a latch, etc., can be made up with this workflow. I'm just going to rename this. And this is a cloned sketch workflow. Well, it's a part design cloned sketch workflow. There we go. So there are one, two, three, four, four workflows there that we can choose from. All can be used for different applications and to create the same object. There are many other workflows I could go through and say create this circle and the outer circle part here and do the same over here and use the Curves Workbench to create blend curves between those and blend those in. I could create these as two separate objects and blend them in together. There are many ways 
And it's actually quite a good practice to go through and see how many ways you can create that object because you learn something different each time, which you can be applied to your other workflows. So I hope you found that useful and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.